Gold and silver coins in the Columbia River, south of Wenatchee. That's where outlaw Matt Warner was faced with two choices. He had just robbed the Roslyn Bank and was in a desperate flight for his life. Outsmarted by a wise sheriff, his original getaway plan was now up in smoke. He was outflanked, outgunned, and heading straight for the swollen Columbia River. The spring runoff made this a particularly bad position to be in. Trying to lose his pursuers, he darts into the bullberries along the riverbank. Being cut to threads by the thorny bushes, he stops to take stock of his situation. He can hear the lawmen closing in, his heart pumping. What does he do? In front of him is a mile-wide section of deep, cold, dark, raging river. He's on a good horse. Does he give up or try to swim his horse across? The lawmen will not take him alive. They would rather bring him in dead. He needs to lighten his load if he is going to make it across. Dropping his saddlebags and throwing his Winchester and six-shooter into the river, he eyes the cut bank. The heaviest thing left on me is my money belt. It's full of gold and silver coins, $10,000 worth. This would all be for nothing if I drop it. I'll take my chances. With that, he runs his horse off the cut bank and into the mighty Columbia River. It is general belief that a horse and rider cannot make it across the Columbia during high water. This will likely be his grave. The shock of the cold water takes his breath away as his head bobs to the surface. He is in a fight for his life, pointing his horse upriver at an angle to the current. They swim for the other side. He will need to use all his horsemanship skills to come out of this alive. The river is so swollen, it produces whirlpools bigger than his horse. They form a depression so deep that once in them, he cannot see over the edge. A panicked feeling rises up inside of him. Sheer terror races through his blood. I am going to drown if I can't lighten my load. I need to drop this money belt. But how? I don't dare let go of my horse. Get a hold of yourself. You're tough as nails. Fight! Fight, damn it! Making it out of the first whirlpool, he starts to gain some confidence when he notices splashes all around him. What in tarnation is going on? Them low-life deputies is shooting at me. Can't they see I'm struggling already? I've become dead set on beating these deputies. I try to stay as low in the water as I can, even using the whirlpools to my advantage, staying out of sight. Soon I realize I'm making progress. I'm more than halfway across, but still a long way to go. At least they can't shoot at me no more. That's when I notice my pony is getting tired. We drop into another whirlpool, and for a few seconds we are both submerged. This money belt feels like it weighs a ton. I need to drop it right now if I'm going to make it. Reaching to my waist with one hand, I struggle to unbuckle it. The dang thing won't come off. We dip below the water again. Me and this horse are going to the bottom if I can't get it off. Exhaustion hits me. I can't see straight. My mind starts to get foggy. Just cut the dang thing off, I tell myself. But I can't get my knife out of my pocket. I'm losing consciousness. Just let me get across this river and I will change my ways. I will never rob again. With every stride of his horse, they sink below the water like a heavy log. Looking up, Matt notices that they are almost at the shoreline. A renewed vigor comes over him. His horse feels it too. My God, we are going to make it. He feels his horse touch the bottom of the river as they rise out of the icy water. We did it. My God, we did it. As his horse staggers onto the dry riverbank, he slides out of the saddle. Too weak to stand, he collapses to the ground. Looking back at the river, he sees the deputies on the other side and smiles. I did it.